Asia is a country in Southeast Asia and Oceania between the Indian and Pacific Oceans. It consists of more than 7,000 islands including Sumatra, Java, Borneo, Sulawesi, and New Guinea. Indonesia is the world's largest island country and the fourth largest country by land area at 1,904,569 square kilometers, with over 267 million people. It is the world's fourth most populous country, as well as the most populous Muslim-majority country. Good day, everyone. So, I am going to discuss the history and status of English language in Indonesia. So, before that, I'm going to give a brief information about the said country first. So, the official language in Indonesia is Indonesian. It is a standardized form of a Malay which serves as the lingua franca of the archipelago. So, the vocabulary of Indonesian borrows heavily from regional languages of Indonesia, such as Javanese, meaning Kabao, as well as Dutch, Sanskrit, Portuguese, Arabic, and more recently from the English language. So, the Indonesian language is primarily used in commerce, administration, education, and the media. And thus, nearly every Indonesian speaks the language to varying degrees of proficiency. So, most Indonesians speak other languages such as Javanese. So, the Javanese is their first language. So, in Indonesia, they consider English as a foreign language. Unlike here in our country, here in the Philippines, we consider English as our second language. So, in order for us to understand the way English is used and seen in Indonesia today, it is useful to know something about how historical, political, social, cultural, and linguistic factors have shaped its status and functions over the last century. So let's discuss the history and function of English language in Indonesia. History and status of English in Indonesia. So. There are more than 700 living languages that are spoken in Indonesia. There are 726 languages spoken across the Indonesian archipelago in year 2009. It was dropped from 742 languages in year 2007. It is the second largest multilingual population in the world after Papua New Guinea. Because in Indonesia, um, Papua which is adjacent to Papua New Guinea, has the most languages in Indonesia. That is based on the EGIDS and classification used by Ethnolog. So these figures indicate that Indonesia has about 10% of the world's languages, establishing its reputation as the second most linguistically diverse nation in the world after Papua New Guinea. Most languages belong to Austronesian languages family, while there are over 270 Papuan languages spoken in Eastern Indonesia. So, languages in Indonesia are classified into different categories. These are national language, locally used indigenous languages, regional lingua francas, foreign and additional languages, heritage languages, languages in religious domain, English as a lingua franca, and sign language. Of, co of course, um, this Japanese is the largest language by number of native speaker. Now let's talk about the history of English in Indonesia or the historical. So the Dutch occupied Indonesia for over 350 years from 
1595 were allowed to provide any education at all to the Indonesian population. During the Dutch colonial period, few Indonesians received any education, even at primary level, and the majority were illiterate. So this policy of keeping the colonialized people in the dark was quite different to that of the British and their colonial territories. The few secondary schools that existed in Indonesia were attended only by Dutch children and the children of a select few local officials and well-connected people. Although English was taught as a foreign language in this school, very few indigenous children attended them. So, English was taught in Mulo. So, when we say Mulo, it stands for Mir It Gabriel Leger Underwich, which is equivalent to high school in our setting or secondary. So, they are usually able to speak English very well. So, let's talk about the status of English in Indonesia. The policy in Indonesia has never recognized English as an official or second language. While the national language is spoken today by a majority of the population, the situation is multilingual with many also speaking one or more of the local vernacular. Currently, English is seen as needed for development. It is needed for instrument, instrumental reasons as a tool which provides access to international markets, scientific knowledge, and expertise. English has the status of first foreign language in Indonesia but nothing more as policy makers fret that an increased use of English might have in adverse effect on Indonesia, but it would be a mistake on a grand scale to sideline English or stunt its growth as the argument that its increased use in society might detract from the development of the national language. Indonesian is a false one. English is essential for development. So, the people should be given every opportunity to learn English. So, one way to do this would be to give English a new upgraded status. So, in Indonesia, English use usage fell over the month from 21.7% to 21.34% of Indonesian users. That is still a huge chunk, much larger than we typically see for a secondary language in Europe. So among ASEAN countries, Singapore was ranked first in English proficiency with a score of 66.03 and it was followed by Malaysia and the Philippines. So Indonesia has been ranked 39th out of 80 countries in the year 27 English First English Proficiency Index or, or EFEPI. It is an annual report conducted by International Education Company English First or EF. So, Indonesia fell 7 spots from the previous year when it was ranked 32nd out of 72 countries. So, the average score in Asian countries is 53.60 according to the report with a score of 52.15. So, Indonesia is below the regional average and part of the low proficiency band category so what are the programs for the improvement of english proficiency 
In Indonesia, the status of English as a foreign language was declared formally in the year 1955 in a teacher-trainer conference. The status remains the same until now that English is the first foreign language taught at school. So there is also a law which is 1989 chapter 9 section 39 mentions that English as a compulsory subject to be taught from grade 7 at lower secondary level under government regulation number 060 un U1993 dated on February 25, 1993, mentions that on primary level, English might be taught as a local content subject starting from grade 4. So in addition to that, the 1989 Law on Education, it is Chapter 11, Section 42, and in it is located that paragraph 2 also allows for the possibility of using English as a medium of instruction with the provision that this is needed for developing knowledge of a particular subject or vocation. So, just like in other countries, there, there are also authors who wrote a very, very nice chore and these are the 10 famous authors the first one is Pramodia Ananta Tower so Tower is living during what was probably the most turbulent time in Indonesia life gave Pramodia Ananta Tower a lot of stories that he gave back to the world with excellent poise and brilliance so, most of his works have been translated into 37 languages, including the semi-autobiographical stories from Blora, that is in year 1952. And another one is the famed Boro Quartet. As an intellectual thinker, as well as author, Pramodia has been imprisoned by both the colony and Indonesia's post independence government for his progressive notions although many of his books have been burned or banned during that time Pramodia's surviving works is still give us an elaborate and captivating look into indonesia's past episodes from a very personal perspective so another one is dini so he is she is a Javanese batik maker. Dini grew up listening to her mother's stories from traditional literature, in which later helped to shape her own unique perspective about the world. So, among her 20 books and various other literary works, many are well received and prized as progressive feminist epics of year 1970s Indonesia. Albeit written in a rather conventional tone, she talks about the rules, justices, realities of lives between the two genders, especially for women. So, the topic of his works is more about justices or about life. Her most popular work include On a Boat in the year 1972. Another one is My Name is Hiroko that is in 1977 and Heart of Peace in year 1998. So another is Andrea Hirata. Who is Andrea Hirata? She is the successful debut novel Laskar. Talangi, who opened a new world of influence, literary, even tourism in Indonesia. So in year 2005 novel, which was set in the now famed tropical paradise of Belating Island, was followed by other best-selling books that fascinate readers even beyond Indonesia. 
So his best works have inspired a movie and serial TV. And also a literary museum built in Belutong to celebrate the local pride. Another one is the he also wrote the Rainbow Troops that is love for the heartwarming stories about children from humble origins chasing their dreams with all their innocence, passion and peculiar way of life. Another one is Ayu Otami. Ayu Otami's unconventional thoughts and ways of living have given her a bold and unique voice that she expresses with remarkable wit. So she turned from journalist into author. It is a big player in the Sastra Wangi movement in Indonesia's literature, where young women take on unconventional and controversial issues like sex, political, politics, and history. Her debut novel, Saman, has been reprinted 34 times and is still one of Indonesia's most acclaimed literary work. Since then, Ayu Otami has published more best-selling, most, mostly about political. He also wrote novels, essays, and even screenplays. So we have also Dewi or D. Lestari. He's a singer who turned to author. Dewi Lestari's fame began long before her first self-published book was even out. Now she was she walks around international book fairs with nine excellent books under her belt, four of which have made it into the big screen. Even though Dewi Lestari is a renowned contemporary author, her award-winning Supernova series is often regarded as Indonesia's classic fiction. Through her well-written literary works and consistency, she has frequented the bestseller list more time than most. Another one is Genawan Muhammad. This senior author and poet from Indonesia has been gracing the literary scene for decades with legacies ranging from mass read essays to his own publication. So after retiring from journalism, he has maintained remain quiet, prolific creating literary works such as poetry, books, plays, and many more. Some of his anthologies such as Paricasit in year 1969 and Interlude have been translated into several languages while his series of columns, Sidelines, is still widely read and referenced by the younger generation. He is not only a patron of art and literature but he is also an intellectual with noteworthy ideas and notions that his publication banned during Indonesia's new order era. Another one is Motar Lubis. This renowned novelist journalist bears the hallmark of a brilliant author and thinker during post independence in Indonesia. He was jailed for almost nine years by the first president. So the novel which is in year 1963 was one of the first Indonesian books to be translated in English and that was written by Lubis. It was exported to his home country years later and continues to be one of the most prized of Indonesian pieces of literature. Eka, we have also Eka Kurniawan well known in the international literary sphere than Indonesia's. Eka Kurniawan became the first Indonesian to be nominated for a Man Booker 
international prize in year 2016. So, in a year after, his 2004 novel was translated to English under the title Man Tiger. So, his other novel titled Beauty is a Wound was one of the name one of the New York Times it is 100 notable books his awards honors and intensity in creating exceptional works have led Eka to be referred to as Indonesia's finest contemporary writer more times than most often as successor of the famed Pramoja Ananta sometimes even likened with Haruki Murakami for his surrealism and satire. We have all the, also Sapardi Joko Damono. This senior writer and, and he is also a poet had a long and successful career publishing dozens of books and anthologies since 1969 right up to the present. His last novel, Pinkan Melipat Jarak, was published in year 2007. He was 77 years old at that time, attesting to support his productivity and relevance throughout his ex extensive career. Many of his anthology books, novels, and poems have been translated into various languages including the local dialects of Indonesia. So that's the end of the discussion.